actually my second fallback. <laughs> okay. Would be I'd be a hand model. <laughs> I would. Doing? That's, that's, that's nice. it. I would be just like I'd be. You do have a nice a hands. hand model. Yes. So that that would be my fallback. I think we could make that happen All now. Right. All right. I think we can do this. You could be a pastor and a hand model. <laughs> and a hand model. <laughs> I have to stand still. Welcome to this week's episode of The Follow-Up. I am here with Pastor Jack. Thanks Hello. for joining us today. Glad I can be here. So we are going to be doing a deep dive on it to your sermon from this last weekend, God's Justice. Right. So to kick things off, we're going to do a quick little test to see if you can explain your sermon in 60 seconds or less. Okay. Okay, you think you're up for it? Let's do it. Okay, I'm going to give you a countdown, and then the timer's going to go, and you'll hear a little ding once your time is up. Okay. Okay, three, two, one, go. We talked about God's justice this weekend in regards to what we may call paybacks. Like, what does that feel like? And especially in the series on being in a valley when you feel like, where's the justice? So we talked about God's justice from the future perspective, where God will truly judge people and what's gone on in life and in the world. Uh, secondly, we talked about justice from the perspective of what's going on right now. And the fact that not only does God put justice in place, when you go through history and through scripture, God uses his people to execute it. We talked about justice from the perspective of four primary people groups, and that is the oppressed, the poor, the orphan, and those who are the stranger in your land or the displaced. So what does that look like for the church, Christians, to live out being uh, a people of justice and helping provide for those in need? And then finally, we looked at the justice we deserve, mm -hmm. which... Uh, can be a pretty bleak picture if we forget about Jesus. <laughs> There's my mark. I was gonna say you got it in just in the nick of time. I That's think it's it. gonna That's be it. think think it's gonna be great. So we're gonna go beyond the sixty seconds here. Okay. So as you were prepping, this is a huge topic, and especially right now, mm -hmm. like with just all the different people who are feeling like they are marginalized and just all the different things that are happening. What were some things that you wish would have made the cut in the sermon, ju but just because of time didn't make it? Sure. You know, I, I look at people's expectation of justice from God's hand mm. and it being in the moment. And one of the illustrations I use was the idea of a chess master. A chess master, short version of the illustration, is playing the game with the end in mind. He knows the moves. He usually sees three, four, five moves out, and he wins the game by playing a strategy. The second way you can win a game is to not win and just call it a draw and say, we're never going to figure this out, call it a tie. The third way is for the chess master to just get mad and flip the board. And I think that's what a lot of Christians want God to do, is just get mad at everything, blow it all up, and then call that justice. Mm -hmm. And I, I would love to dig into a little bit more of the Christian mindset of, do we really trust the Lord in the circumstances? And do we really have eternity in mind? And we touched on that a little bit earlier in the series, we had several different times, and it really comes back to, do we trust the character and the attributes of God, which Bill hit on in his mm -hmm. message. Those are things, a couple of uh, things I think we could have touched on more. Also, the idea of the church being the hands and feet of Jesus in a practical way. You know, I, I brought up the idea of, can you be the answer to someone's prayers? What are the needy and the outcast and the orphan and the widow? What are they praying for? How mm -hmm. could we be part of being the solution to that. Yeah. And I'm not talking purely a social justice concept or a constitutional justice concept. I'm mm -hmm. talking about a heart of Jesus concept. So I, those are some things I think that I, I touched on that, like you said, this could have gone on for a long time. Oh, absolutely. And I love that you just brought it back to in this like last little sentence that you had, like coming back to the heart of Jesus, mm -hmm. that we're not wanting to, people to be on two different sides of like what we we and our finite selves say justice is, but right. we're coming back to like, what did Jesus actually model? What did his character look like? And how can we live that out in an everyday sense so we can be the hands and feet of Jesus? Yes. And it's not just an option. It's a responsibility. Right. And those are two very different things. And he calls it to be a responsibility for the church. Mm, I love that. So one thing that you did talk talk about is this thing that has been kind of stirring up for you recently from the pastor that you just went visited right, of right. be the answer to somebody to be can you explain what it is yes. you know where I'm going yeah. with it be the be the answer to somebody else's prayer mm -hmm. how can we in a very practical way if God has equipped us He's called us He's resourced us um, maybe time wise we have the ability as well and experience wise where we can help bring someone along we can step in and so many times it's a practical step to a very real or physical need. Mm -hmm. And I, that, that for me just stirred me. 
how can I do that individually with the time that I have, as well as how can we as a church do that for Green Bay and Brown County and even beyond? We've got missions teams that have just come back, teams that are going out. We've got groups that are working with displaced people here in Green Bay. Mm -hmm. uh, we have even within our church. So there are very practical ways we can execute that. I love that. So that's one of the way, one of the big takeaways that you want us to walk away with from this message. You had, you gave us two homework assignments. I did. I did. This isn't school, uh, but, but I welcome it. It is. <laughs> it is. It's a, I think we're always in school. So oh, yes. there's, there's the two homework assignments. The first one is some people, if you're not wired toward justice, a lot of times we don't always see the oppressed. Mm -hmm. And so the challenge was go to, I, I use BibleGateway.com. It's a very simple website. It's a search engine. They have no, uh, no horse in the race. You know, they're not looking to push anything. It is simply looking up scriptures. Mm -hmm. And one thing you can do is choose a word and look up everywhere in the scripture that that word is. So I would challenge you, look up justice and then look up uh, oppressed and see how many times it's mentioned in the Bible, and then what does God have to say about it? I think you really get a, a good picture of his heart. Mm -hmm. The second homework assignment were three Bible verses, which mm -hmm. I just wrote down so I got, didn't get them wrong. Uh, <laughs> Psalm 113, Isaiah 61, and Luke 4. And even though there are three different portions of Scripture, mm -hmm. Old Testament, New Testament, uh, 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 Psalms is more of a uh, poetic writing compared to Isaiah, the prophetic writing, you're going to see a consistency in God's heart mm -hmm. toward the poor, the widow, the orphan, and the outcast. Mm -hmm. So once again, it goes from just God who will judge in the future to God who will provide justice through us in the here and now. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that, Pastor Jack. Thank okay. you for those just next steps that we can take as we learn more about God's justice and really walking that out so we can look more like Jesus. And we will see you guys in the next episode. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of The Follow-Up. If you want to go back and watch the full-length sermon, you can go ahead and click the button right up here, and it'll take you right to the full-length sermon. And then three things before you go. If you are not subscribed already to our YouTube channel, please go ahead and subscribe. So that way you never miss out on a new video when it comes out. And the last two things, if you are loving this content, go ahead and give the video a like, and then leave us a comment. This is a wrap for the In the Valley sermon series. So you can leave us a comment as, of what has stood out to you from this sermon series. We'd love to be able to hear the feedback and we'll see you guys in the next series. Okay.